I have been very, very busy. So I've been a very rubbish research assistant for this. I've no idea what's <laughs> I've, I don't know what's going on in the world. I think it's gone crap. I think everything's okay. getting worse. <clears throat> everything's getting hotter and lots of animals are dying. And apart from that, everything's crap. So yeah, nice yeah. and positive. Okay, I'm going to give you what uh, we call in the business a shit sandwich. Okay, great. Uh, two bits, two bits of good with a bit of shit in the middle. Go for it. So the first one, I'm not sure if you've seen this because it's been doing the rounds a lot on social media recently in the last few days, but a clip from the Jeremy Vine show where they got uh, one of their usual panelists called Mike Parry, who's one of these sort of. Um, thinks of himself as a bit of a right-wing shock jock, if you like. Um, they got him to do a taste test of a vegan sausage sandwich and a pig sausage sandwich. And so he identified a vegan, what he said was a ve the, clearly the vegan one because it tasted like cardboard and then chose the other one and said, this one's the meat one. I can taste the meat in it. It's absolutely delicious. It's juicy. It's all the right stuff. And then it turned out that actually they'd both been vegan sausages and he'd and then he suddenly had to backtrack very, very quickly when he realized that he'd been had. And all of a sudden, that one that he'd said was delicious and juicy and meaty. Actually, oh, yeah, that that tastes a bit like cardboard. But uh, lots and lots of uh, vegan accounts have been sharing that. And it's every time I watch it, it makes me laugh because just just the the realisation when he finds out he's been had, the look on his face that he's admitted on live TV that he likes a vegan product is, I just cracked me up. Absolutely yeah. cracked me up. I um, I saw it, didn't get to watch it. I think it was at the weekend though. I didn't watch it. And then I, watched, I saw, did actually see it Tuesday, I think. And yeah, what an idiot. What a complete yeah. and utter muppet. But that's, that's something that's repeated up and down the country that, Oh, it's vegan, so it must be horrible. Yeah. And yet, not up and down the country, across the world. Um, yes. Because as I, post, as I posted on our Instagram yesterday, we, we listened to him in 49 different countries. Hey! Which is, which is insane. Um, but it, it's repeated across the world. People view vegan, the word vegan must mean, people view it as, as a negative instantly, just because it says vegan on it, however nice it is or it isn't. They view it negatively. And I saw a post on the Vegan Society that they, they've been doing some research into that that's ongoing about does, is the term vegan the way forward? Are we going to win by getting people to eat vegan food? Or is using the term plant-based more effective because you're not, labeling somebody as vegan you're just saying this food comes from plants uh yeah there is that i think there's a lot i think there's a lot of um there's a lot of nuance to everything there's a lot of nuance to this argument isn't that yeah i don't know i don't know what i don't know what the um the answer is to it all <laughs> if we did <laughs> yeah. we'd, we'd get it changed wouldn't we? But... yes but tracking back 49 countries isn't too bad though is it not too shabby, that. Not too shabby. No. Uh, yeah. So thank you very much to all our wonderful yeah. global listeners. We, Cheers. we love you all. Cheers in the most British way we can possibly say it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. So the um, the filling in the shit sandwich. Yeah. I'll give two shout outs. So before we've mentioned VREV closing down, we've got two further closures. Vork Pies. Okay. Who were active in the East Midlands and Clemmy's Vegan Cakes in Nottingham oh. have both announced both announced that they're closing at the end of the year, which is really really sad because I've sampled both of those uh, products from both of those companies and they were absolutely fantastic. But yeah, it's but uh, I, I guess it's the combination of COVID and then prices going up everywhere. Yeah, that's, that's done them in. And like we've said before, when we discuss VREV, it's not it's not just vegan restaurants. It's it's any loads no. of places shutting down. It's not it's not that veganism isn't working. It's not that plant based isn't working. It's that the cost of living is a bag of balls at the minute. 
<laughs> a bag of balls. Yes, that's a that's a good description of it. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's really sad, and hopefully they'll they'll find a way to come back or to sell their products in a in another way. But um, yeah, for now that's 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 really sad news. So there we go. Okay, before you go to your um ending of your shit sandwich, can I just yeah um, quote the thing I posted today? Um, yes, please do. From the, uh, well, I've shared it from the hopeful herbivore on yes. Facebook, which is very love good. Their, love their stuff, yes. It's great stuff. And it's a bit of a, to our American um, friends and whoever, over that way, across the pond. Tofu is gross, says mum, while fisting a turkey's ripped out arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, lo- I love that. How good is that? Thanks. Thanksgiving today, or as I've seen today, which I haven't seen before, thanks living. Thanks living. For vegans. There's, I've seen nice. that I've on a few posts today. I like that. Loving that. Yeah. Yeah. There All those go. poor, poor turkeys. Have you seen the Peter app? Yes, that's a good, really good day. Yeah, I like that. Sorry, back to your shit sandwich. Sorry to have interrupted. Right. So I'm not sure if this is going to work because this is a visual thing and we are obviously audio. But I did a thing yesterday. I've got to stand up to show you. Oh my God, he's got one. That's amazing. Got a, got a proper tattoo. Look at you. Get me at nearly 45 years old. <laughs> Wicked, man. Yes. A proper vegan tattoo. Yeah, that's it now. Two, year, two years' time, you'll have a sleeve. Full sleeves, all around my neck. Yeah. Little but tear trust me, under my eyes. you won't stop. Trust me. I think my bank balance will make me stop. There is that. <laughs> yeah, there is that. How did you that's find it. how did you how did you find it? Because that that so that's the inside of the forearm, which is quite yes. painful. It's one of the most painful places. Is it? See, it didn't hurt as much as I thought it was gonna hurt. Okay. It's not in no disrespect, it's not that big. So it wouldn't last. Well, very I've long. been told that before, so it's it's fine. Hey. Um, there was <laughs> and yeah. it is cold. Yeah. Yeah, where basically, people, what what I know, and I'm sure I would get a lot of backlash off of lots of people about various places it hurts. But I was once told, and I found this to be the truth, like true for me. Wherever you pinch yourself, that it hurts the most. That's where your tattoo yeah. is going to hurt. Okay. So, so like scro- scrotum. What what yeah. on your wrist? wrist Just there yeah, on your wrist. Oh, so the inside of your Jesus. wrist. Jesus, that's not pleasant. Anywhere no, on your forearm, and up here, under your arm. Ooh, that's not good yeah, either. No, no. So yeah, okay. if, you pin- if you pinch yourself and it hurts, <laughs> that's where it's going to hurt. But well done. And it's a beautiful V yeah. with a leaf on it. Yep, that's it. I might post it when I uh, when we publish the episode. We'll yeah, why not? Picture it. So oh. yeah, there we go. That's um, that's that's my shit sandwich for the start. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> I ain't got anything. I literally haven't got okay. anything. I can't think of anything. No worries. Apart from that um, hopeful herbivore thing, that was that made me chuckle. Vegan camp out's going ahead. Yay! Yes, that's been confirmed. So, our guest today mm. is a bona fide magician. Uh, no, not magician. <laughs> musician. Wow. Who has, who has featured on the podcast before. And in episode 11, we uh, played uh, one of his tracks and ah. uh, link, linked to it on the uh, Instagram post. So I'm going to play a clip now and then we will speak to him. Fantastic. So I was looking into Bistopia earlier on and I thought, I'm going to type it in on Spotify and see if it's come up in another podcast. You know, has anybody else talked about it? And then I can have a listen and find out some more. And first of all, it didn't come up in any previous podcasts, but there is a band in Sweden called Dystopia. So they have two songs on Spotify. The first one is called Bereaved and Bereft, uh, which is good. But my favourite one, and I think you're going to like this title, is Protein Deficiency Blues. <laughs> Which I love that. That's amazing.
next up will be the main part of the episode. If you want to get in touch, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. And if you want to get in touch, what do you need to do, Wes? Um, I'd say, I'd suggest you could email us at howiveganpodcast at gmail.com. Our guest today, oh, I'm, sorry. Wes I'm, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, I just slurped D again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave that in. <clears throat> Our guest today on episode 23 is another international guest. We've had guests from Iceland, Belgium, and the USA before. And today we are off to Sweden. And our guest is a musician, not magician, as I said in the intro, which um, I'll, oh, I can't even edit that out now, can I? A musician <laughs> who's just released his latest single, which you can find on Spotify, which we will be playing as part of the podcast, um, called conscience dipation i think i've got that right uh so i guess today is martin welcome yeah thank you thank you very much did I'm, i get that uh, right delighted is... to be here. excellent thank you did i get it right <laughs> is conscience dipation is that right Co- conscience dipated actually yes Did. okay i've typed it Nearly. Wrong. Yeah. okay Nearly. Sorry. <laughs> that's my fault <laughs> oh, uh, no dear. worries Okay, so tell us about the the new single then, and um, what's what's the what's the story behind it? So what what's it about? It's uh, well, the music is it's a way for me to express a lot of things that I usually um, go through every day, um, and I guess we at some point I, I know you already talked about it, and that's the way we found each other actually. When you mm-hmm. uh, talked about the um, the word dystopia, and uh, yes. and so, so going through that everyday emotion or state of being rather um, kind of builds up um, a lot of different emotions, and for me, the music was the relief I really badly needed to just feel better uh, about myself and about everything that is going on so it's it's a kind of as i described when i try to sell like selling the song or there's a pitch the song is the word mm. um for for different uh, streaming services I'll, I'll kind of describe it as a, a, a rock and roll slap in the face on the non-vegan folks. Oh, I like that. Nice. So, <laughs> so it's 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 a way for me to deal with the frustration uh, of seeing all the things that we see, knowing all the things that we know, and just find ways to deal with that most people don't care. Uh, to mm-hmm. just go about their daily lives and it's kind of fine to them and <laughs> to, to me it's uh, and, and to, to, to many other people as well uh, vegans um, it, it's kind of tough everyday life mm. uh, especially if you haven't got those things that where you can find a, a place to of belonging or other things where you can get your frustration out if it's through training or if it's just being social or whatever but yeah. it's very different for every, everybody and um, the story about the song is um, I last year uh, I went, went to um, an animal rights camp here in Sweden and uh, on that camp, there were a few musicians that had released animal rights music. And I, I was really looking forward to meet them because uh, they have been huge inspiration for me and also a way for me to uh, f- find recognition and uh, know that other people feel the same way mm. and believes have the same values and things like that. So. 
that was a great thing to go there. And while being there and getting to know them, it kind of started to build up um, a motivation and inspiration. And also on that camp, there was a guy who actually had like a release party for his first single. Brilliant. Um, and uh, that was a huge inspiration for me because he, uh, he played the song, he talked about it, and he, there were so many things, so many great things happening at that camp. All the people that you met being in, in, the, in the sphere of just relaxing, like mm-hmm. a mentally relaxing place and knowing that everyone I talked to here, it, it, they are in agreement with me. And we had lectures, people talking about different things. And uh, there was a w- woman there, uh, a, a psychotherapist, and she was talking about um, the expression uh, Vistopia um, through her lecture and the importance of taking care about yourself and your own well-being, especially when being an animal rights activist, because it can be very draining. And when I heard that very word, I thought that that's an that's a very special word, a very I really liked it in an instant. It, it really stuck out. And I, I thought to myself that someone should use that word and write a song. And then I thought about this guy who has play, had played his like first release song, you know, I thought to myself, maybe I could write, co-write the song with this guy. And uh, so, so I kind of took uh, a note and held on to that word. But when I got home, things really started to happening. And it was like, uh, I got home, went to bed, and when I woke up the first morning, I just had, had the idea of conscious debate in my mind. Mm-hmm. It was very clear to me. And I, I just had to like rush out to the start in my computer and started to record like an acoustic uh, version, uh, just the acoustic wow. guitars and, and vocals. And I, I started to build on it from there, adding drums, adding bass. And um, before the day was over, uh, the that single was done that first idea of the song was done that's amazing and wow the following yeah that, that was so wow and and i had been like when i when i went to the camp i was like it's really amazing and cool that there are people writing animal rights music because that's not for me i will do my kind of pop music and that will be all about love and things like that because that have, that's who I have been uh, until that point. So, but when I got home, I just got this rush and I wrote that song. And the following three days, I wrote another two songs. And those three songs are the three singles that you will find on Spotify or the title, these or whatever. But I thought when I when I wrote Conscious to Pay, it was like this is this is kind of good. I, I think this could be something that could be enjoyed by many. So I didn't dare to release that one as the first. So, so I went with uh, with the other two, and uh, it's funny how things just falls into place, giving it a bit time because. If I had recorded that one as the first song, it would have sounded quite different. And all the people that are uh, in on the song to this point, this day, they they wouldn't have been a part of it. So, yeah. So do you, so do you do story, do you do all the do you do all the <laughs> arrangements and the and the um, musicians musicianship yourself? Do you do all the all the instruments yourself? Or is there a band? From, from the beginning, when I write a song, yeah, I have, I have ideas for every part, and uh, mostly. But for me, through my experience as a musician, I have come to learn that it is important to give people space. 
even if someone comes in and play on one of my songs, it probably won't be as fun if I tell them to play like this, not like that, do this, not that. Yeah. And, and instead invite them and this is my idea and we could play it kind of like this. But if you have a different idea or if please just present it to me and we'll take it from there. And most of the times that's just amazing because things that I never could have thought of will then just unfold and become parts of the song. Um, and, and, and a really good example of that was uh, the bass in, in Conscious Debated because um, I, I was really struggling to find a bass player and uh, the idea of releasing the song was actually for September, but it was released now in November. And that, that has very much to do with how hard it was to find uh, the right bass player. And in the end, it landed on, on a guy named Drew, who moved from Australia to UK. And I just kind of found him on Instagram and I wrote to him, hey, would you be interested in? And he was like, yeah, right. that would be great. And then he oh. played like a not completely different, but quite different bass line from what I had made. And I was like, this is really nice. <laughs> this is, <laughs> this wow. is really cool. Let's just stick with that. And uh, the way I kind of wrote the bass, that is only like the part during the guitar solo where the bass goes on a little more intensely. But probably you, you don't hear that as much because you probably will be listening to the guitar solo. But sure. that, that is a beautiful um, example of how, how it can be done uh, if people just can be given the space to express themselves as a musician or an artist. And I, I find that really uh, amazing. Yeah, that's fantastic. So you mentioned that you, your background is music as well. Have you released non-vegan tracks or has or is it uh, been an amateur thing up till now? It's really been an amateur thing. Um, I, I was in a band um, an Uppsala band um, back in uh, 2012 where we released an album uh, where I do the vocals. It's um, like progressive rock and, and that's quite different and very challenging uh, way of doing vocals. Mm -hmm. And I really learned a lot but for my own pieces I have kind of felt for a very long time that I don't have enough material to release anything because I I've always dreamt about doing my own album right okay and uh, I've also been very to be frank uh, insecure about is it good enough I haven't dared to take the step until now so I I actually I actually uh was hit by a depression in 2020 trying to trying to find a way out of that was like okay i i really need to change something and i kind of remind myself of a bucket list that i wrote a few years ago and then i remembered like the first seven points or something like that was all about music wow mm -hmm. really uh, making music releasing music playing bands and things like that and I was like, okay, I haven't done almost anything of that. I have played in bands, yeah, and I've been uh, been out gigging, and that has been great. But until then, I hadn't really released any of my own music. So I thought I need to do that, and so I started uh, started the project. That it's it's still a working project, uh, right. almost more than two and a half years later. And uh, maybe there's a first single <laughs> mm -hmm. re being released in, an, in the near future. But then I went to this animal rights camp and 
those ideas came to me really from from uh, nowhere and I felt that this is something that I, I need to do for myself and yeah trying definitely to do something trying to do something that should make a difference hopefully yeah uh, so that's the like the hubris part of it <laughs> <laughs> Hope, hopefully someone will hear the song and it, it will um, sow a seed and perhaps make it grow into them changing their way of uh, looking at things and, and hopefully yeah. that because that will be the dream if someone mm. writes like an email or something one day and hey man i heard music and it really inspired me to go vegan that would be the dream absolutely <laughs> that would be great wouldn't it so yeah. do you have you done any live performances or has it all been studio based yeah it, it's, it's mainly just me uh I write the music, I arrange the music, and then I uh, find the musicians that I believe can add to the songs uh, in the best possible way. Because yeah. um, I, I find it really important that music are well played and well produced and well, that it sounds good. Then it's another thing if people like it or not. But yes. if, if it's... If it's done in a good way and it, and it's it sounds good when you play it on like your earphones and or your stereo, uh, the chances that it will spread and be played by many is better. Yeah, that's. Yes. So, and uh, I, I could add as well because uh, that guy who called himself he, he still calls himself the artist named Peplon, who played his song Glass Walls on on that. Um, animal rights camp uh, some of the last summer um, he said something that really did stick with me and he said that all profits from this single I will give them to animal rights organizations Wow! and I felt that yeah that's, that's really beautiful more people should do things like that so, yeah. so, so when it kind of started things started happening for me uh as writing the songs i felt that yeah i, I want to i want to make all the whole project like that um because just being able to express myself is valuable enough for me and if i could in some way shape or form uh collect money to give to animals in need that would just be beautiful and it, it, it will even add to the meaning of things because that is yeah. that is also a thing that I struggle with going through these uh, stages of dystopia what's the meaning of things if the world looks mm -hmm. like this if the, yeah uh, I've got to say the title for protein deficiency blues <laughs> when I first saw that absolutely <laughs> cracked me up I was laughing so much when I saw that. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it, was, yeah, it was a really funny thing because <laughs> I, 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 I believe it was on like Instagram. I thought I saw the shout out and I was like, okay, they, they must have tagged me like the wrong person for this. <laughs> but then I went to the episode and started listening and then you started talking about these uh, the different aspects and then really so there's a band in Uppsala yeah that, that's probably me <laughs> and then <laughs> when, when, you, when you mentioned that uh, you will probably like this one and uh, you mentioned the pro protein deficiency blues I started laughing as well that was a really wonderful uh, wonderful thing to hear so that's, that's <laughs> good that's good excellent uh, I don't really know Swedish geography very well, unfortunately. No. Um, I've been to Stockholm twice. Um, that's, okay. not a, that's, that's not a boast. But where is Uppsala in, in comparison to Stockholm? Uppsala is like uh, 45 minutes north if you take the train north of Stockholm. Okay. So it's kind of close by. Okay. Uh, not far past the airport then? Is that right? No. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. The airport was. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Very close to Åland Airport. Yeah. 
Okay. It's a it's a bit like Luton is to London, Matthew. Oh God, I'm sure I'm sure it is not like Luton at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most likely not. <laughs> I really hope it's not I, like Luton for your sake, Martin. I, I couldn't tell. I've never been there, so no. I've been to London, but not to Luton. No. Yeah, love to everyone in Luton. Yeah, big up, big up, Luton. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go on, my sorry. So, Martin, so do you want to tell us about your vegan story? Then? When, where did it all start? What made you change and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, sure. Um, it, it was not like an obvious thing. I had a girlfriend back in uh, 2000 and um, she had been going on for, it was like the third time and she said, now I'm now I'm going vegetarian, and I was like, "Are, are you serious? It, it's not possible. You can't live like that." You know all all the excuses I hear now days. Yeah. I, I did all of them, and, and uh, actually that was just like two or three months months before I went vegetarian myself, and the amazing thing was that I felt really good. Physically, physically, and I stuck, got stuck with the vegetarian way of life for about eleven years. Uh, okay. Reading up a bit, uh, I, I kind of got rid of like the candy and things like that with gelatin, and I kind of got rid of eggs. And I was looking for like cheese that didn't have. Oh, whatever that's called in English, <laughs> but there's an ingredient which you rennet. extract from from the cows. Yeah, yeah, rennet. Uh, it is. Okay, yeah, yeah. And you could find like cheese with with uh, a a veget, veget, uh, vegetarian or plant based and mm. enzyme, and I was <laughs> like, yeah, this feels good, <laughs> and it it kind of took a long time but then I talked to a girl on a dating site actually uh, in 2011 and she was like you should really watch this clip and she did send me like a link and I was like okay cool I'll do that and that was the very speech with Gary Rovsky the best speech you will ever hear <laughs> yeah. and I was I was completely sucked into that moment and I was, I, I couldn't do anything but listen to him because every word he said was, yeah, he's got a point. Yeah. yeah, he's got a point. Wow, never thought about that. And at the end of it all, I kind of figured I don't really need to do the Q&A but I found the Q and A to the to the whole clip as well, and I I watched that. And when I was done with that, it was okay. I I don't really have a choice. I'm vegan now. I'm vegan. Yeah. So the next day, I decided that it would be my first vegan day. So it was overnight. So, yeah, that part was overnight. The veg vegetarian part took. <laughs> <laughs> took its time yeah but the vegan part was like I, I have i have i have nothing to say i have i have nothing to no excuses i i just have to admit that this is where my values are yeah here here, here are where they lie and, and uh, i felt that it, it was the only thing i could do for myself so, so, sorry, that, Martin, how many years ago was that then? That was actually 11 years ago, two days ago. Wow. Jesus. 22nd of November, it was 11 years ago. Ah, Fantastic. Amazing. I, I think that makes you one of our ancient <laughs> vegans. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that. You talk about this uh, <laughs> term. Yeah. Okay, well, because... that sounds like ancient. That's cool. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I think any more than ten years, any more than ten years is is, is ancient. And then we've yeah. got like, and then we've got BC and AC as well, haven't we? We've got before cowspiracy and after cowspiracy. That's yeah, that's quite a key term. But eleven years ago, that that must have been there must have been some struggles back then with sourcing vegan food and that sort of thing, especially food. Yeah. It, it was in a way, but. Um... The, the first the first thing that really hit me when I decided so okay tomorrow I'm vegan hmm what should my protein powder be mm-hmm. that was my first concern <laughs> like everyone else I had gone with like whey protein and I wonder if there's soy protein hmm and I went to like the gym shop and uh, the girl in the counter she said but yeah we got we got soy protein and I was like oh awesome Let's roll with that. Sorted. Um, but I real I realized kind of quick that that wasn't really good for my stomach. So I, I tried a few different things, and and today I go along with like hemp protein is really good for me, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, pea protein as well. So yeah. those those two are my favorites today. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So, what um, what's been the biggest struggle over those eleven years then? Oh, um, <laughs> it's it's very much like the mem, uh, the memo uh, or, or the mem that uh, says that struggling with idiots. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, that that is really the hard part. Uh, there, there's another part that that is kind of tough, and it's not too easy to just lay out there um, but loneliness yeah it's a really yeah it's a really I tough get that. part yeah because um after 11 years none of my close friends have have still not gone vegan none oh. of my family members have gone vegan they have some of them have made changes yeah and I, I appreciate that, but I would have I would have thought if someone would have asked me, okay, so you're going vegan now, how do you think life will be in 10 years time? Mm. I, I would probably have guessed that. Well, all my closest friends and family, they would probably be vegan by then, but no. So that builds up um, a feeling of loneliness and, mm. and also going to work. Um, I have been in some situations. I have met people that have been vegan as well, but it's still very rare. Yeah. So, yeah, that's so kind of tough. Is, yeah. So is there not much of a vegan scene in Uppsala then? It, it, it is actually, and, and that is a bit surprising. Many people that come to Sweden uh, are a, a bit maybe perhaps not blown away but close to it that um, product development has come very far uh, you can find a lot of prog- uh, products in in different stores uh, you don't have to go like to a specific store anymore they're they're all over the place and you can mostly go to maybe not to any restaurant but most restaurants have a decent option even though i would prefer to go to a completely vegan place so it's, it's kind of good in sweden but but still i i don't know really what's the what what the struggle is for people uh, even though i have my ideas mm. <laughs> the that's something that comes up quite often when we ask this question is really the realization that just because you've gone vegan and have seen the light if you if you like yeah that your friends and family don't see it and the realization that they don't think the same way as you is it, it really hits you doesn't it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There, there are so many parts of it because you have you have kind of enough of a struggle when going vegan and realizing oh did i contribute to this into that and and that is enough of a, a blow 
yes. to really <laughs> feel yeah. down and, and, and bad about yourself. And then you have to <laughs> confront, perhaps not confront people in a way that you will demand them to do something about it. But you, in, in many meals that I had, they, they still go about eating their meat. And uh, yeah. Yeah, it's hard. Um, it's hard. It's tough. So there's so many aspects of it that I don't believe anyone who isn't vegan could possibly understand. Hundred mm. uh, percent. Could I just add something to the the part where I talked about struggling with loneliness? Absolutely. Absolutely yeah. Yeah. Because at at some point after I got the shout out from you guys and I tuned in to your podcast. It was a really great time to just sit back and listen to other people, uh, fellow vegans talking about life, uh, the different aspects, uh, struggles and um, the development and good things and the bad things and um, yeah, to feel uh, a belonging. So that has really helped me at times. So I really oh. want you to know that. So I really appreciate your pod. And that's it's amazing. Really... Thank you so much. That's that's really heartwarming for us because that's kind of the reason that we wanted to do it. Because up until fairly recently, Wes was Wes and my wife and his wife were the only vegans that I knew. And so it's it's hard to talk to people about yeah. being vegan when they're not vegan because like you mm -hmm. said earlier they don't understand no but non-vegans well, don't understand what it's like so well, this doing this podcast is a way of us just having a chat with um either people that we knew already or new friends like you who you know are yeah. finding out stuff it's just an opportunity for us all to have a bit of a chat about being vegan we spend all yeah. our lives arguing with people and trying and trying to <laughs> be activists about it as, as as much or as little as we can be with various people but actually to just sit and chat about being vegan it's like yeah this is awesome yeah that's it that's um yeah other than question five there aren't really any silly questions that you'll be asked so <laughs> it's um it it's with you know none of the questions are about trying to catch you out we're not no. trying to prove a point or anything like that so it is it's really just about let's just have a chat and yeah you know we've already got some one thing in common at least haven't we yeah so. yeah <laughs> absolutely because i listened to an episode today and and you were talking just about that uh, but now i kind of lost the thread so please go on oh which sorry which, that's all right which episode was it you were you were listening to um I was listening listening to the the one with the Icelandic uh, actress. Oh, Aldis, yep. I can't remember what I was going to say, but uh. <laughs> <laughs> just Matthew edited that whole bit out. So, Martin, you were saying earlier about how your your friends and family, like you, you sort of hoped that they would they would follow you in your footsteps. Um, but how did yeah. they actually, how did they actually react to you going vegan? Interestingly enough, there wasn't many reactions um, that I remember. Um, kind of two uh, different reactions. One, one from colleagues and one from my mom. And my colleagues were like, oh man, don't you know you're missing out? <laughs> and when everything is so clear that you choose to go vegan, it's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, you, you you couldn't offer me like ten thousand, and I would eat this. <laughs> so, yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not missing out. Uh, and 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 that's such a strong evidence to that they don't understand. Mm. And also, uh, uh, you probably heard this a lot of times <clears throat> as well when people are like, 
yeah, I mean, I, I, I understand your point of view. I can understand why you <laughs> went vegan. And I'm like, really? Then how come you're not? Yeah. Yeah. I get that. That one is always kind of weird. Because uh, I figure that when people really do understand, there is no other way. Because you, you do it for the animals. Yeah. And, yes. and then the other part, uh, the other re reaction was uh, my mom. And she's she's just so lovely and cute. She was like, "What what am I going to cook now?" Oh yeah. <laughs> and she had been so wonderful in adapting to my vegan uh, to my uh, to me being vegetarian. So she was like, "But I have this at home, and I have this at home. Aren't you going to eat that?" Oh, sorry, no, no, not anymore. And. <laughs> Uh, but I figured that they ate it or gave it away or something like that. And but she was she she's been really wonderful and uh, adapting uh, fantastically. And at one point she even made me like a, a Schwarzwald birth birthday cake, and it was just amazing. And it was vegan. Wow! Uh, <laughs> it just blew me away. Amazing. I was like, how? <laughs> So, th those are the two reactions I actually remember. But then, people in general, of course, um, have been asking quite a lot of questions. But now, when I really do want people to ask me questions, because now I have more knowledge, I have read up, yeah. and I, I have like the facts. I could give them, um, I can give them where the facts came from, the sources. Now people don't ask me anymore. It's kind of like <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like they oh. know what what they will receive, and yeah, they they just don't want to know, and that's a huge frustration because that that is another part of some of the people really close to me, um, that have said they have really put it like that. No, don't tell me, don't tell me, because then yes. I won't be able to eat this. Yeah, that's kind of the point. Yes, yeah. exactly. Like an Egyptian fish, they're living in denial. Oh. Ah, yeah. Ex exactly. <laughs> Daddy jokes, yay. <laughs> but that is it. They don't want to know because they already know. They don't want yeah. you to tell them again. They already know. Yeah, but they're just refusing to accept it. That's what it is, isn't it? Yeah, I can, have, of people I, like that. I, I can have a conversation with people, and I have, I have them where they'll, they'll, they'll listen to what I've got to say and and they'll go, Yeah, I, I get I get that, blah blah blah. And so I can send you this link if you want to the, to the Gary Roski video or something like, Oh no, I, I don't, I don't think I could watch it. Why? Yeah. <laughs> What's the difference? I'm telling you the truth, which you're accepting, but you're not accepting the actual like the, the, the that resource like you said that resource that you can give them to give them the 100% fact but like no 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 that's too much that yeah that's it but I have to add at this point that just the other day I actually had a really positive dialogue with a, with a colleague of mine and because uh, he, he said do you know what I'm going to eat today and he uh, we were talking over teams like video chat and he put up a picture and i was like uh no what's that it looked kind of looked like the cake uh yeah it's it's beef you know and i was like uh yeah you know you're talking to the wrong person here <laughs> and he was like oh sorry no why yeah i'm vegan you know oh no i didn't i didn't get that sorry uh i won't do that again and then he got really interested. So, so what do you, what do you eat? And we, we really had a really good chat. And I, I, I told him that because he, just like I do, he, he really likes hard rock. So I said that there, there's a product called Satan, and you will probably, uh, that will probably be something that you could enjoy. <laughs> and he was like, oh, that, that, that sounds, is a that brilliant sounds... way in. I love that. <laughs> And uh, 
then if are, you... are you into death metal? I've got this. There's this stuff called data. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> magic <laughs> yeah and I, and i told them that there's actually like vegan t-shirts that says hail satan uh <laughs> yes <laughs> and he thought that was just hilarious and wonderful so we talked a bit about different products and i told him that i i could send you some links and, and pictures and he was like yeah I, I i never really tried anything like that i would love to do that wow like, oh, that's wow. good wow yeah, That's exactly. Brilliant. Wow. So that, that hasn't happened in a long time. So a very positive thing. Yeah, that's really good. You, I mean, yeah. I've had conversation with people where they've seemed interested, but they've not then sort of, or at least not said to me that they're going to look more into it or that they're going to take that step. So that's a, that's a really good conversation mm -hmm. that you've had there. Really, really good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And funny as well so yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Also, also you've good. got him with the satan haven't you That's it. yeah 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 <laughs> fantastic so uh since you've been vegan then how have things changed for you either physically or mentally well like i said earlier uh the big physical change i felt when i went vegetarian and took away the meat um i really felt felt like like a, like an uh, like I had a shower, but inside of me, like oh, flushing like out that. Nice, all nice. the yes. bad, bad things, uh, really felt refreshed, yes. and it was a wonderful feeling. Feeling like I, I haven't probably felt this in since I was a child or something like that. I remember it very strongly. Uh, but when I went vegan, the main change was mentally. Okay. Um, it was like, oh, finally, I can like rest my mind knowing that I'm not intentionally or unintentionally, but I'm not through the way I, I'm living my life contributing in a direct action that will harm another sentient being. Mm -hmm. And that, that was such a great relief. So that was That's... really the main main difference yes. for me going vegan, and that was, oh wow, thank you so much. And um, but it, but it's an interesting, it's an in interesting ride because on the other hand, you, I have this belief, and on the other hand, I had all this like huge tsunami with feelings coming over me with things that okay, but that means then, like I said earlier, I have contributed to a lot of things that if I really knew that, if I had known, I would never have chosen that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's like you've been tricked, isn't it? Yeah. Really. Mm. Tricked to do something that you do not agree with, but everybody does it, so it must be okay. Yeah. It's yeah. weird. It's a very right. strange. It's a strange one because you, you know, we've we've covered it in other episodes, like partic particularly from a personal standpoint, that I I was a full carnist before I went vegan. I was, you know, Matthews called me Mister Meat. You know, that's that's how I lived. Yeah, and yeah. that was his stage name as well at the strip club. <laughs> <laughs> but I completely understand. I completely resonate with what you're saying there about when you when you do accept that truth and you and you move forward with it you're just like yeah I, feel, I actually do feel that 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 positive feeling of i'm not contributing to that anymore and that that's that killer part that you you wish other people that could see it you want mm -hmm. you you tell these people like we've said in other episodes that you speak to your, your your close mates who are compassionate, empathic people, and you're like, you're a good guy. You're you know you're you're a top bloke. If you just gave this thing, if you Gary, you obviously speak, give that fifteen minutes of your time, you will realise. Nah, I ain't watching that shit. And you're like, come on, because I've done yeah. it. I've been there. <clears throat> but. But you just you're just up against a brick wall. It's horrible. 
Yeah, and some sometimes I, I I have thought about it, and I kind of come come back to the case, same conclusion over and over, and it's like that that tsunami with feelings just crashing down on me. In some way, I think people deep inside they know that way will come. Yeah, and I I, I do believe that many people they probably feel that they won't be able to handle it or at least, at least they they believe they won't be able to mm. and that i believe that that makes a huge resistance to making the change yeah, yeah absolutely wow got all deep there didn't we yeah <laughs> let's lift us out of it wes <clears throat> let's get out of it let us get out of this deep hole martin where'd you get your protein and other nutrients from because obviously all, all non-vegans want to know that. So, you know, tell yeah, how do you, how do you combat protein deficiency blues? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Beautifully segue. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's interesting because when when people have I, I remember I remember a dialogue that I had because uh, I've been really had had a huge interest in and a passion in whiskey, another story. But through that um, hobby, or what I should call it, uh, I met a lot of people and they really caught on that, okay, so you're vegan. And some of them really asked me a few questions. And I remember very, very well, uh, a guy was a dad and he called me up and said, is it okay? Can I talk to you for a few minutes? Yeah, sure, absolutely. And they said that my, my daughter is 17. She wants to go vegan. What should I tell her? And, and I was like, uh, it's a wonderful thing that you, you ask. And it's a wonderful thing that you really care. And I think you should like give her the possibility to go vegan. But you should also kind of in a way demand from her that she will look things up. Because I've met people that really have done it the most terrible way. And I've been like, okay, what are we, what were you thinking? People that really started to eat like salads, tomatoes, and cucumber. And it's like, uh, okay, and oh, that, <laughs> and we're not it. rabbits. That's not gonna work. <laughs> that exactly, that's not gonna work. Yeah, so I wow. had to leave. I had had to stop being a vegetarian. Oh, really? Um <laughs> so I had this chat with this guy, and I said that so. It would be a wonderful thing if you let her try to be vegan, but you should also demand from her to read up so that she can tell you that, well, I read this and this and these nutrients and these products, protein and so on. Hmm. Uh, and that's the interesting, interesting part about protein, because when you start to read up, it's almost everywhere. Yeah. In about everything uh, in different amounts, sure. But it's, it's also interesting when I read kind of um, articles uh, from um, medical journals or th things like that, uh, it's, it's worse to eat too much protein than to eat a little bit too little. All right. I didn't know that. that. Uh, I don't remember where I read it. So, I'm not going to go with full force and say that's the case. Well, it's, but I read it's it. going to be on the internet, Martin, now, so it's, it's going to be true. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. Especially if it, play, if it plays on Facebook, then, then it's Yeah, gone. that's it. <laughs> but I kind of read it once and, uh, once and twice, so it could, could be some truth to it, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, inter interestingly <clears throat> enough, most people that not, aren't vegan, they believe that the only place you will ever find protein is in meat. And you find, like, I was just look, looking at a chocolate bar today, and it was like uh, 5.9 grams of protein. Wow. <laughs> in, a, in, a chocolate, in a chocolate bar. It's like <laughs> almost, yeah. Um, and, it, and it wasn't the, it wasn't a protein chocolate bar either. It was a 
chocolate bar. So um, wow. it's it's everywhere. But okay, the sources, um, of course, uh, tofu is a great one. Uh, I eat it a bit too seldom, uh, so I could increase that. Um, but I really like Satan, uh, like I said yeah. earlier. Uh, it's a really wonderful product. And um, there are few different products coming onto the market now that are made from peas that are really good. Like, um, I don't believe, I, I don't know if it's a Swedish company, but they, they, they are called Go Green. And uh, they have kind of made, made meatballs out of peas. And they are so juicy <laughs> and oh. excellent. And with things like that, I, I don't mind having like uh, meat replacements. So that's really good. But I do love uh, lentils and I could, I could eat <laughs> loads of kind of nuts, seeds and things like that. I just love that stuff. But Martin, that's just bird food. <laughs> yeah so i'll probably lose my arms and develop bing- wings <laughs> <laughs> but i'm oh, still man. around so <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah be okay so what's the yeah. best thing about being vegan for you then the best thing is the peace of mind I believe, uh, or it's one of the best things, uh, knowing that I'm not intentionally contributing to the suffering of other sentient beings. That is a huge deal for me. Mm-hmm. And and interesting, interestingly enough, um, the, um, the community is also very important to me um because i made i made some wonderful friends really uh, both like musicians and other activists uh, i mainly do outreach when i'm not doing like the music um activism and i, I met such wonderful people and um uh, having having a blast Excellent. Whenever we meet up. Yeah. yeah. So what sort of and, um, outreach do you do then? What's the format for that? Um, like going, um, going into town, setting up a table with flyers. Um, in, in, some, in some cases, we have like TVs where we show uh, short snippets of uh, yeah. the animal uh, I, the the animal industry, and uh, we try to talk to people passing by, um, handing out the information, um, and that uh, that's a wonderful way to connect as well. And to it gives it gives direction and a meaning. And mm. uh, whenever you have like a positive conversation, it really could make your day or even week. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, there's so it's scary that we know so little, that people know so little. Mm. Yeah, uh, still, it's 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 2022, but so many people are in the dark still because we still see those <clears throat> commercials on TV. Here's the new, the new butter from the Swedish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A cow yeah. in a big massive yeah. field yeah yeah we love the music and the sun is shining and there's a breeze in the trees and i have to be honest and say i loved that commercial when i was younger yes yeah. they always and they always had like this beautiful like folk music tunes and i was like this is amazing i love this yeah, yeah. but the thing was i, I kind of ate it all yeah music with with the message and really believed even through a very long time uh, of being vegetarian that i had 
done the big difference <laughs> going vegetarian. Mm -hmm. So it, it really sticks. It sucks. I think it's really sad that we live in a time where information is so accessible. There is so much yeah. information out there. And, and, and there's so many people that are completely blinkered on everything. Yeah. You know, I just, I just, it, that blows my mind. I just like, I just think why it's, it's, it's literally there for you to look at, to read, to watch, to listen to. It's not interested. It's well, really that's, scary. that's the terrible side of things today as well. There's so much information that, so people are like, there's so much false in information as well. Mm -hmm. yes. And people go so easily to the point where, well, this is the bunk. This is not real. This is fake. Or whatever. And yeah. I, I can feel that to, to a very wide extent that, that is used to just protect themselves from listening further. Yeah. But yes. I, ha I have to add that in many cases... Uh, the dialogues we have when we do outreach with people um, are very positive and sometimes could even start to have like a, a dialogue with with the tough guys going by oh love meat yeah. and in some cases they actually come back or they stop and they start talking to you mm. and if you if you're there and 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 you be you're able to ask the right questions that can really spark uh, a great dialogue. But sometimes people's minds are really closed and mm. they, they just don't wanna, they don't wanna no. know. But no. Yeah. So that's, that's the, main, the main part of what I do in activism. I've done a couple of vigils as well, but that's, uh, those are tougher for me. Yes, I could imagine um, that would be really, really hard. I'm yet to do one. Yeah. I want to. I want to do it. I, I, maybe I'm hoping there might be one over the. Um, it would be so weird, but over the Christmas period, while I'm off work, mm. uh, yeah. if I get, if I can get to one, I do want. I do want to go. I know it will be tough, yeah. but but that, that's the point, though. I suppose, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, this is all getting very, very deep, isn't it? Bloody hell. <laughs> I think it's a great thing to do those things because it, it gives you perspectives. Yeah. And I, I can be I can be honest and say that I haven't been I haven't been on a vigil being like the closest to the animals, but okay. I've been close enough to really feel like the heart. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. Must be pushing tough. together. Uh, mm. uh, tough, and it's it, it's just weird to be there and see the people that are working with this every day. Not, um, I can understand it in a way also because if I if I were ever were put in that position, having to work with that, I probably would develop like defense mechanisms mm. to be able to yeah. cope, to cope with it. And, yeah. and that really, you'd, you'd have really to, scary. wouldn't you? Yeah, mm. you you would have to exactly. Mm. So yeah. in a way, I can understand it, but it, it's it's such a terrible industry in so many ways. It's not only the animals, because you probably heard this as well. Uh, but there's so many there there's so many aspects of the uh, human suffering. Yeah, it is. Uh, do you know mm. how much people working in slaughterhouses suffer? Mm. Yes, like huge, huge rates of and, yeah. yeah, 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 depression, huge PTSD, of, isn't there? Yeah, suicide. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. and drug abuse, drug addiction, and alcohol. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. So, what's your favorite vegan product at the moment? Yeah, I, I knew that was going to come. <laughs> <laughs> and and I've been trying to uh, uh, look on it look look on it from different perspectives, but uh, to be honest and sincere, I would probably have to say that oat milk is my go getter because uh, it's such a great product. Um, 
it tastes good. Uh, you can have a couple of glasses uh, of 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 that, and it kind of fills up the stomach nicely, and, and it's it's smooth for the stomach as well. So it, I, f- I feel kind of right away. It's this is good for me, and yeah. you could use it. You could use it for everything, like to to your porridge. You could use it for uh, making uh, like a pizza bread. Uh, you can do it for baking just about anything where you use um, usually milk or water. Um, so it's a really all-round product. And I always, even even though if I uh, usually enjoy uh, drinking other plant milks as well, I always come back to, to right. goat milk. Yes, a great product. Do you, do you drink it on its own? Yeah. Do you drink oat milk on its own? I've never done that. I've never tried it on its own. I've only ever put in coffee. <laughs> really? Okay, cool. <laughs> you should. I, I, I think it's a, it's a wonderful beverage. And uh, I could really... I, I was just... When you said that, I, I remembered something. Way, way back before when I was vegetarian long before I went vegan, I discovered a combination that is really, really good. Um, I don't know what it's called really in, in, um, in, in, in British, um, but it's like peanut, it, it's like snacks, so like peanut rings. Okay. Um, and if you eat those, while drinking oat milk, that's ah, right. great. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> really good. But um, to to be a bit boring, uh, water <laughs> is underestimated. That's yeah, a favorite product actually. It's quite important as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I drink. I drink. I do drink loads of water. To be fair. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, there are so many great products. Um, I'm I'm a bit I'm a, a little bit too keen on chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite? What's your chocolate of choice? Oh, um, I do like dark chocolates, and uh, but we have we actually have a, a chocolate uh, factory here in Uppsala called Vegan Delights, and they make they make. That's Amazing. not fair. <laughs> <laughs> they make awesome candy. They like make a vegan Snickers bar called Vegikers. Oh man! I should. Oh, I, should I just found them on Instagram. Oh my! I've just found their Instagram. Oh my god! I can. I can um, send you a couple. <laughs> I'm putting hey! on weight just looking at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow wow are oh, we going to stop off there on our world tour Wes? okay then fair enough I'm on it <laughs> brilliant okay, really. so unfortunately that's not uh, like whole food <laughs> <laughs> how, how, far, it was. How, how far away <laughs> from that factory do you live is it like just around the uh, corner <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. It's like twenty it, on the other side of town. So it's oh, okay. twenty minutes with car, uh, but it's like uh, thirty, forty minutes with bike in, in right. summertime. So not too far away, <laughs> which Fantastic. is good and bad. <laughs> 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 That's <laughs> okay yeah. so you you touched on it a bit before but what advice would you give to anyone who's thinking about going vegan yeah uh, just do it because if you have had the thought there's something inside of you telling you that it's probably the right thing to do so don't dwell on it just go with the flow and uh, if you're not like you guys said earlier, you don't have to like go cold turkey. Um, even though I would think that would be a beautiful thing. <laughs> but you could like for every every time you go shopping. So, okay, 
I usually buy cream. Okay, what can I buy instead? And change that product. And every time you go for another product that is from your experience, animal-based, you could just change it. And it's an easy thing. And uh, yeah, join join different communities. Mm. Uh, if if you use, if you use social media in in the good way, there are actually beautiful communities where people share recipes, uh, uh, where they encourage you and tell you you think of this, think of that. Um, so and and do some do some reading up uh, and. <laughs> Real, really start reading the, the labels, <laughs> the ingredients, <laughs> and yes. you will realize that the world of foods is really weird. Yes, yes. that's true. That's grief, right. yes. Uh, it's milk Gosh. in this as well. It's <laughs> such yeah. an eye opener, isn't it? It's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. An egg. And I saw one. Yes, I saw one yesterday at, yes. at work. So, so someone bought some um, cake things in, and they wasn't cake. It was like a like a, a scone type thing. But um, mm-hmm. I was looking. I was looking through the ingredients, and it had egg. And I was like, "Why is there egg in this? There's no need for yeah. there to be egg in this." But yeah, it's just yeah. It's crazy. Man. But they keep doing it. Sometimes it. Yeah. Sometimes it just feels like they have a deal. Yeah. And yet, okay, so we bought this and we got it cheap and we have tons of it. So we had just to add it in everything. We've got loads of stuff. What should we do? Just chuck it in that. Yeah. Chuck it in that. Because <laughs> it's, uh. it's very much like you said. Why, why is it in this product? Why is it in, yeah. in that one? Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, one of the weirdest things I ever discovered is that they had like. <laughs> I was going to buy a bag of uh, chili nuts, and in the in the flavor section and in the in the section of spices, where it also was like sugar and salt and things like that, it was shrimp powder. Oh, oh what? Yeah. Why? Oh, oh exactly. Man. Why? Mad. Yeah, I really, really enjoy this. Very nice to to meet you. Yes, uh, we were just saying the I same know. thing. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's great. We, um, I'm, I'm, I know Wes feels the same. We really enjoy doing these recordings. Whether or not anyone listens is a bonus because it's just great just to chat about vegan yeah. stuff. You don't get to do yeah. it in normal life, do you? <laughs> no, not in this way. <laughs> No. Yeah, it... that, that was the thing that I was talking. Uh, what I was thinking about earlier that you talked about um, how how interesting it is that a thing like, like veganism really can connect people, and yeah. the way the way it it does it. Uh, that was the thing that you were talking on on the podcast with the uh, Icelandic girl, um, a woman, um. It's it's very interesting how how that factor uh, does makes such a huge impact and such a huge difference to connecting with people like nothing yeah. else I ever experienced I, I believe. Yes, Wes, um, you came up with a really good analogy, and I can't remember which episode it was, but you said like when you go to a gig, oh yeah, and you know, you might all like the music, but that is quite often the only thing that you've got in common there. But with veganism, that's just the start, because often there's a lot more that we that we have in common other than veganism. It, there's just something about it that, that draws us together. Mm. Yeah. You could be you could be at a gig and you everybody in that room loves the same band, loves the same music. And you might say, What was your favorite album? What's your favorite song? It mm-hmm. might it might end there, but if, yeah. you say, if you say, "Oh, you're vegan," when did you start? What did how did you find it? Blah blah blah. blah. It's question, 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 question. And it's like, wow, just carries on and carries on. I'm yet to find anybody yeah. except on here. 
<laughs> no, that's amazing. Yeah. Who's your vegan inspiration, Mike? Uh, from the very beginning, very much Gary Urovsky. Yes. His very speech made me realize that that was the only way for me to go. Uh, uh, so huge inspiration for me. Um, there are, of course, the other guys uh, like Carb Strong and Ed Winters um, as well. And there have been a, a, a few uh female speakers as well but i i remember i i found a, a woman talking a few years ago but she like kind of disappeared and she had so many great things to to share uh don't know why she just out of the blue kind of the like the i believe she had like an instagram or something something like that and one day it, it just suddenly stopped uh, oh. So that was a bit sad. Mm. Um, but I do have my ex girlfriend, uh, Ronya. She means so much to me uh, oh. in, in regards of being vegan. Um, she was the first and, and so far the only uh, vegan partner I've had. And that was such a beautiful thing in, to share in our relationship mm. and uh, I also believe that it com contributed to us uh, finding a lot of other different aspects and went deeper than I've ever done in any relationship thanks to this uh, and we are very close friends today and that means the world to me uh, that's she's really such good a, mm. yeah she's such a beautiful and caring person uh, not only towards animals, but to uh, people in her surroundings as well. And she's really a person that inspires me to uh, be a, a better person um, and, and to to share, to be generous, um, and to to show that you care about others. So she she's a huge inspiration, absolutely. Sounds amazing. Mm. Yeah, it's a beautiful friendship. What's your favorite vegan venue or restaurant? That's a tricky one. And you're not allowed your chocolate factory around the corner because, like, that's really, that's <laughs> really, that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who lives near a chocolate factory? Uh, really? Only it's only Charlie, isn't it? That's it. <laughs> Yeah, may, you maybe maybe you answered it for me. <laughs> <laughs> that is probably my favorite venue, but uh, they don't really have food there. Uh, uh, but it's it's a beautiful place, and they have great mm -hmm. products. Absolutely. Um, when it comes to food, um, we had a couple of restaurants here in Uppsala, but the the ones that have been like completely vegan they have unfortunately shut down it's Aww. really sad because mm -hmm. those are the places that i really want to support mm -hmm. but we have, we have a couple of ones that had really great dishes we have like an indian um indian restaurant indian kitchen in Uppsala that has some amazing vegan options but i will probably go to stockholm uh, to find the one that is kind of close to my heart. It's a Chinese restaurant. It's kind of small place, uh, but they have amazing food. It's called Lao Wai. And they have, they have it's really spicy food. And uh, they have something that I ate. I, I, I'm not really too keen on mushrooms, but when I, when I went to China, in uh, 2016, uh, I really fell for, for a, a mushroom called cloudy ear mushrooms. Oh, and, wow. And, yeah. They have got <laughs> and, some good they, names. Yeah. Cloudy they, ear. Yeah. And, and they have that in a couple of dishes in Lawai. 
uh, so I ate that last time I was there, and that was such a nostalgic, nostalgic moment. So, yeah, that's my favorite place actually in, in Stockholm. But oh, they, okay. have, they have a, they have a few other other venues as well that are completely vegan. Um, mm. Yeah. Have, have you ever been to Herman's? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah, that's it's, it's a good probably place. I've been there several probably times. probably my favorite restaurant in the whole world. Oh Herman's. wow! It was uh absolutely loved it in there. You know where you sit is it high yeah. up on Soda Malm overlooking uh the the bay and uh Gamlestan and you just yeah. go and eat whatever you like and oh my god, it's just absolutely fantastic. In, yeah, in the summer that, that is kind of unbe- unbeatable. Yes. Because you can be out on the terrace and, and see uh, overlook the, the water and everything. Yeah. Yes. Really they nice. just posted they just posted today on their Instagram uh they've put all like Christmassy lights on the terrace and everything. And I just thought, oh man, I miss it so much. <laughs> oh, okay, just just let me know if you hit Sweden again, and I'll definitely meet up yeah. with you guys and go there. Absolutely. Oh, I can't wait. That'd, I'm that'd desperate awesome. to get to Sweden. Yeah, I'd love to go back. I'm I'm, I'm hoping to uh, go to UK next year for the uh, vegan campout, but I haven't oh, really? got a ticket yet. Yeah, I was real. I was really. I really wanted to go this year, but it didn't work out. Oh, that would be awesome! That'd be amazing. Mm-hmm. We're both going, so just got to get a ticket. Okay. Really. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, then I know two people that are heading yeah. there. That's great. yeah, there you that's go. it. And also, <laughs> there'll be other people there who've been guests. Yes. So then you'll know more people. Oh. So, yeah. no reason not to go. There you go. Um, we'll have a little. Um, we'll we'll have to have a little guest like reunion or meet up or something, won't we, Wes? A lot yeah. of the people that that we've had on, not a lot. Some of the people that we've had on, we've never met face to face. No. Um, oh, really? They've just been people like yourself that we've met through yeah. Instagram or Facebook or whatever, yeah. and just sent a message and said, "Would you like to come on?" Uh, so, yeah, it would be great to meet some some people. Yeah, it'd be amazing. Yeah. That would be cool. The final question. This is one that sort of evolved as we've as we've gone on because you mentioned at the start it, struggling with idiots is is quite a common <laughs> theme that we have, yeah. and tied in with quite closely tied in with veganism is uh, sort of uh, concern for the climate as well for the planet. So mm-hmm. the final question is: Do you have hope for the future? Um. Most of the time, I have hope for the future. It feels uh, it's an important thing that I do something uh, like the music part to contribute to a possible change. But um, to be frank, I have had like a tough period the last couple of weeks and uh, not been as optimistic as I, as I would like to be. Um, mm. But there are, just looking at the, uh, the market of developing products, there are new ones coming all the time. And uh, there are people um, like uh, guessing that these products will pave the way in such to such an extent that we won't be needing like meat and milk in mm. like 10 years time or something. And that's, that's just amazing things to hear. And I really want to believe that, but some days it's harder. Uh, yes. Yeah. And I, I believe, yeah. Uh, um, there was a question the other day in, in uh, another forum and the question was, I believe it could have been on Twitter, perhaps. And so what do you, what do you think about uh, lab-grown meat and how important oh, yeah. uh, how important could it be? Uh, would you eat it and things like that? And I was like, no, nope, won't eat it. But 
anything that will help uh, end the animal suffering um i'm down for it like mm. I, I will support it it's so, it's only the next step on for from things like seitan or uh yeah. jackfruit being used instead of pulled pork isn't it it's it's some it's a meat substitute yeah because because animals aren't being killed to make it yeah. so mm -hmm. yeah. go for it it's not for me but like yeah. i say if it means that meat eaters stop eating animals then what's wrong with that yeah, yeah. so it's it's different from from, from time to time but mostly well, i feel mostly positive good um but then sometimes <laughs> I read in, in like the paper or like uh, we are thinking that we perhaps should uh, add um, insect based meats to the school's uh, <laughs> insects uh, cantina. Yeah. Also, yeah. Also, yeah. Also, and, that, it's yeah. Like, uh, and and other and other like uh, it was like a really old sea creature like um what it's called crustus 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 or something like that oh crustaceans uh, yeah um wow. that they had been experimenting with and i was like what how how can people come up with this weird alternatives when there are so many good ones yes yeah like <laughs> Like when they're experimenting with putting like um, things on cows to stop them emitting methane, you're like, just yeah, just stop breeding just... cows for me. <laughs> just look at what, why is it so difficult? Yeah, let's put VR goggles on them and make them happier. Yeah, yeah. just Come just cut it. it. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. Why can't wow. I see it though? I don't get it. <laughs> I just don't understand. <laughs> No. Oh, yeah. We're, we're, we're screwing oh, the planet. We're screwing, it, screwing the planet up by breeding cattle. So how can we do yeah. it a different way? Unless breed more crustaceans we, and yeah. bugs. It's what? <laughs> yeah. How about you guys? How how do you feel on that point? Hope for the future. I think I'm the same as you. Some some days I'm like, this is going to be okay. We're going to get there. We you know I look at like you were saying about. There's still meat and dairy on the shot on the shop shelves, but but the plant based alternatives are growing, and the fact yeah. like we, we've discussed before that in the last five years alone, it has mm -hmm. grown exponentially. So I'm like, well, it can only continue. There might, you know, we've talked tonight about restaurants shutting down, but the products are still growing. So there's yeah. there's obviously there's obviously that market there. So I look at that. And then I'm constantly on on the flip side of that. I'm constantly worrying the fact that it's still too warm. Yeah, you know, the, you, know you know, it's it's the, it, we're heading into December in a couple of weeks' time, and it's still ten degrees here when it should be two, three, four degrees, and that annoys the hell out of me. And it annoys my wife that it annoys me. She just goes, "Stop going on about it." I'm like, "I oh, know, but it's annoying." I'm I'm the same. I'm day by day like uh monday i felt really sort of down in the dumps doom and gloom and then i got home from work and my daughter had a uh, geography lesson at school and she's 11 so she she had a ge geography lesson at school and they'd learned as she put it uh, they'd learned about how cow farts are going to destroy the world <laughs> Uh, so she decided then that she wants to move away from eating meat. I was like, wow. so the last four and a half years of me telling you about how terrible the animal agriculture industry is completely out the window. <laughs> but one lesson, one geography lesson, and all of a sudden you want to stop eating meat. Fine. Um, <laughs> that's a really good thing. So then all of a sudden I thought, well, if they're being taught this in schools, if kids are being taught this in schools, then hmm. that's more than I learned in school. So yeah. that's got to be a good thing, hasn't it? Even hmm. if it means that people go vegetarian or pescatarian, that's still better hmm. than eating meat. So 
it's a step in the right direction. So, um, yeah, so, some things like that give me hope for the future that, I mean, basically the, the kids are the future and they're the ones, I think the veganism and that sort of awareness amongst younger folk is much better than it is amongst us old, old folk. And that, I mean, me and Wes in that, Martin, not you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. so um, I, I am, I have kind of guarded hope let's say that's good. try not yeah. to get trying not to get too carried away <laughs> yeah uh but, but a good example for seeing the change is that one of the absolute biggest meat companies in sweden they have like the last year put out i think it's three or four different vegan options wow and i'm like Oh, sorry, I'm I'm not going to buy buy that because you still have a horrible industry, mm. and you are killing millions of animals. So I cannot, but it's still an amazing thing, amazing thing happening there, because yeah. they realize something, and that is probably a, an indication for what's happening with the market. Yeah. And that yes. and that that gives hope. Yes, that's it. If there's because that means that there's money in it for them. Because they wouldn't yeah. do it if there wasn't money in it. Nope. So that means there's got to be the demand for it, and then mm -hmm. that can can only be a good thing, can't it? That we yeah, find exactly. that more products are released and people buy them, and then even more products will be released. And in the end, it might take 20, 30, 40, 50 years, but in the end, companies will think, well. Why are we still killing animals? We don't need to. Yeah. We're not making any money off that part. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And so hope, wow. hopefully we will like pass a, a, a threshold at some point and it will just go away. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's it. That's that's and that the is big the hope. hope. That's the big hope. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh awesome. Thank you so much, Martin. That's been really excellent. I've really enjoyed that. Uh, Wes yeah, has got a little. Insane. Wes has got an expression on his face. I can tell he's enjoyed it as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Um, this really makes a difference. May I add one thing to? Of course, to absolutely. Wes? Go for it. Because um, <clears throat> I, I, I believe I said it, but just to be to be clear that. Uh, all the song, all the songs that I will release as Dystopia, mm -hmm. uh, all the profits from Dystopia will go to aid animals in need uh, through animal rights organizations, shelters, or uh, different causes. So please play the songs, and the more you play them, the more help for That's the animals. That's fantastic. That's amazing. Good man. That is brilliant. And so, is it? Um, does uh, wait, how do I phrase this question? So is it better that for people to buy the song rather than to play it loads of times, if that makes sense? That's a really good question, actually. And I, I um, <laughs> it, it, it's a part where I can be a bit nerdy. And uh, <laughs> it, yeah, it, it's it's actually an interesting thing because if you buy the song, that equals around... 250 streams of the song wow that's yeah. a massive difference yeah and if you stream a, a song for 250 times that will be like you have to put it on repeat for 24 hours almost <laughs> yes okay yeah <laughs> so uh buying the song make huge difference absolutely it, you can stream it on spotify can't you yeah um, that's uh, where we found you, but it's also available to buy on um, iTunes. Yeah, you can buy it on iTunes. Uh, you should be able to buy it on Amazon. I haven't succeeded in that. <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> what's happening in there. Um, okay. But streaming it also makes huge difference, absolutely. Because when you stream it, uh, the numbers go up, and the more you stream a song, other people will see that okay, this is a popular song, and they will also stream it. So that has its benefits as well. Um, and there are several services you can find it on, on YouTube, Deezer, Tidal, a, a load of different channels 
uh, of many I uh, even don't know the names of all around the world. Mine, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you and meeting you. And I really, really, really look forward to meeting you next year if you get a ticket, which if you don't, I won't be very happy and I'll be very sad. <laughs> but even if you even if you don't go to camp out, but you visit the UK, then give us a shout and we'll... Yeah, definitely, man. We'll, we'll, we'll hunt oh, you yeah. down. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Wonderful. Yeah, I, I will definitely do my best to uh, come to the UK next year. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. So thank Thanks. you very much. It's been a pleasure. Cheers. Thanks mate. so much, thank Kyle. Really, really enjoyed that. Cheers, mate. Yeah. Cheers. Take care. See you. Bye. Ta da. Oh, oh, he was lovely. Oh, it made me well up a bit then when he was talking about loneliness and us. I know. Oh. Yeah, that was quite... Um, that, that was a great chat. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. I want to say cathartic. I don't know if that's the right word for that. Ooh, sounds good. Yeah, I like the word. Mm. Yeah, bless his heart. He's, a, he's an absolute star. No, that, I love that. He was, he was a good guy. He's lovely, a good lovely guy. man. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if you can tell, sorry to change the subject, that my Go face on. is flashy. Yes. It looks like you're standing by a police deck, a police car. Oh, you've got your tree up already. Good God. In the kitchen. Wow. <laughs> one in the kitchen. We've got the proper one in the living room. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I love it, man. Fantastic. So anyway, after all that, yes. I hope you all enjoyed that. that so do I. Episode. Yes. I hope you enjoyed we it hope, too. We hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, if you want to get involved, you can find us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. What else? YouTube. YouTube. Well done. There's always one. And if, if you, you want, want to send get, us a message. If you want to send us a message, um, uh, feel free to email us at howiveganpodcast at gmail.com. And... Um, Somebody will get back to you and have a chat. Cheers. Mm -hmm.